Hello everyone, today we will be learning about the reactions of metals with acids. Let's get started. We have metals and acids reacting to form a salt and hydrogen gas. So any metal reacting with an acid would always form a salt and hydrogen gas. Now the salt will be dependent on the acid and the metal you'll be using. So let's take magnesium. Here these react with cold dilute HCl or sulfuric acid. So these elements here, magnesium, zinc, iron, react with uh, acids which are cold and dilute. So as you can see. Example, we'll see zinc reacting with hydrochloric acid. When they react with hydrochloric acid, they form zinc chloride. Now how this is formed is the zinc, the metal, reacts with this part of the hydrochloric acid. So the Cl part of the hydrochloric acid is how the chloride is coming from. So zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. Now if you write this as a chemical equation, you have zinc which is Zn. If you refer to your periodic table, you'll see that. And HCl is hydrochloric acid. They would form to uh, form zinc chloride. Now zinc has a valency of plus two, while chloride, which is in group seven, has a valency of minus one. When they switch over, it'll be ZnCl2, and ga uh, hydrogen gas is being produced. Now note that the states are written: zinc is a solid, hydrochloric acid is an acid, so it's in aqueous form. The salt is also in aqueous form, and we have hydrogen gas as a gas. Now when you're writing an ionic equation, we have to first split up our ionic compounds. So we have chlorine, the HCl, H and Cl. So in other words, we have H plus and Cl ions. Again here we have Zn plus, which is 2 plus, and chlorine, two, uh, 1 minus, so like that. So when you're writing it, you would just cross these out because that equals and when you're writing it, it's just going to be like that. So you have Zn plus H plus giving us Zn ions and hydrogen gas. Now the redox reaction with magnesium and sulfuric acid. Again, you would write the equation, you have magnesium reacting with sulfuric acid to give you magnesium sulfate and H2. Now sulfate has a valency of minus two, just remember that sulfate ions, S4, are sulfate ions. And they have a valency of minus two, so it's written like this. And it's reacting to form hydrogen gas as well. Now when you're writing the ionic equation again, we're going to cancel out our sulfate ions because it's ionic form here and here it's get, it gets cancelled out. And you would have magnesium reacting with the hydrogen ions to form magnesium ions and hydrogen gas. Note that the sulfate is being taken out. So these are called spectator ions because they're not actually reacting, it's undergoing a redox reaction. They're just acting as a a spectator in the reaction. The two equations above undergo an electron transfer. As you can see, we have magnesium losing electrons to give it to the hydrogen, which forms hydrogen gas. Therefore, it is called a redox reaction. Now, we have done redox reaction and we have called it an electron transfer reaction. So, what are the two uh, half reactions that, that's happening in a redox reaction? There's a reduction and an oxidation reaction happening. So here the reduction is when it's gaining an electron. So it's our hydrogen ions that gain the electron to form hydrogen gas. And in an oxidation reaction, it loses electrons. So we have magnesium losing electrons to form magnesium ions and our electrons being produced. Note that they have to always balance. So in this case, we have two hydrogen molecules being produced. In other words, our hydrogen has a two. That means there's going to be two hydrogen ions reacting with two electrons. With the magnesium, we have magnesium, one of the magnesiums reacting to form magnesium ions. 
Now the magnesium ions has a charge of 2 plus. In other words, it has to lose 2 electrons. So you have 2 electrons being lost. Now metals that react with dilute hydro hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid. We have sodium reacting with dilute hydrochloric and sulfuric acid, potassium, calcium, and metals that are listed above, they react explosively. So in other words, they produce an explosion in the presence of sulfuric or hydrochloric acid with the dilute acids. And also some metals, they don't react at all. And they're copper, silver, and gold. So these don't react at all. Now let's go to categorizing our metals. In other words, just summarizing what we learned. We have very rapid reactions happening with sodium and potassium because they produce explosions. And we have rapid reactions happening with our group 2 metals, which are calcium and magnesium. Note that these are group 1 metals and these are group 2 metals. So if you look at your periodic table, you would understand that the reactivity when you're moving to your right decreases. We have slow reactions happening with our transuranic elements. I mean, sorry, uh, yep, tra transuranic elements. We have um, uh, aluminium, zinc, iron, and tin. So that's with our um, metals in the middle of the periodic table. And metals that are towards the bottom of the periodic table, or are inert metals, are lead, copper, silver, and gold, as you can see. So that's just summarizing what we learned, where metals react with acids. Now let's look at some questions. We have question 14. It says to list two metals that could be used for pipes to transfer dilute sulfuric acid in a chemical factory. Now note the word list. When you're listing, you just name it or identify it. We have copper, silver, and potassium. Now they're written in their chemical formulas. You can write it as their name, like say copper, silver, and uh, platinum, but it depends. So if you want to write it like that. But then if it says to name, you should always write the full name. In other words, you should write copper, silver, and platinum. Question 15. Which, which metals react with dilute, cold dilute hydrochloric acid but not cold water? Explain this difference in reactivity. Now magnesium, aluminium, zinc, chromium, iron, cadmium, cobalt, nickel and tin. All these react with cold dilute hydrochloric acid but not water. The valence electrons are held to into tightly and the energy necessary to release them is provided by the reduction of the hydrogen in HCl but not by the reduction of hydrogen in water. Now this is the chemistry behind it. So what happens is the valence electrons in these metals are tightly held but with the reduction of the hydrogen in the hydrochloric acid that energy is being provided by that reaction but the reduction of hydrogen in water that energy is not sufficient to release these valence electrons. So that's why these metals react with acid but not water. Moving to question 16, it says, based on the observations in the above table, deduce the order of activity of the four metals tested, starting with the most active metals. Now note that it says deduce, that means you have to extract your information. So we have calcium, magnesium, zinc, and copper, and this is in order of its reactivity. Calcium and magnesium both are from this second group, while zinc and copper, they're in the middle. So we have calcium, uh, calcium being more reactive than magnesium because it's towards the bottom of the periodic table. So if you move to your left, towards the bottom, that's where you find the most reactive metals. And these are two, in the middle, so they're not as reactive as these two. Moving to question 17. Now question 17 has three parts. The first part is to write a general equation for the action of metals of dilute acid. So when a dilute acid reacts with a metal, what happens is a salt and hydrogen gas is being produced. And this is our general equation. It's not written in um, chemical formulas, it's just written in words. 
the second is water now this is from last lesson so you have to kind of flip back your memory when metal reacts with water it would form hydrogen and a hydroxide so it will be a metal hydroxide and the third one is with oxygen now oxygen was two lessons back if you remember so when a metal reacts with oxygen it would just form a metal oxide now this is also known as a synthesis reaction because it's from two to one now moving to question 18 it says write word and balanced formula equations for the action of dilute sulfuric acid on calcium now we know calcium is quite reactive but it's not as reactive as sodium potassium so when uh, calcium reacts with sulfuric acid it forms calcium sulfate now the sulfate is from the sulfuric acid because remember it's H2SO4 now this part is a sulfate calcium sulfate plus hydrogen now you have to write a balanced formula equation as well when you're writing it you have CA which is your calcium reacting with your uh, sulfuric acid now the formula for sulfuric acid should be known and just memorize it as H2SO4 and then we have calcium SO4 calcium sulfate which is CaSO4 now calcium has a valency of 2 plus sulfate remember I told you has a valency of 2 minus so when you write it they just cancel out and you don't have any subscripts but so calcium is found in the second group that's why it has a valency of plus 2 and we have hydrogen gas also being produced. Now moving to part B, part B says potassium. Now potassium is quite reactive, it's more reactive than calcium. So potassium with sulfuric acid would give you again potassium sulfate and hydrogen gas. Writing that, that as a uh, chemical equation, we have two molecules of potassium reacting with sulfuric acid. When they react, they form potassium sulfate and hydrogen gas. Now note the potassium sulfate, the potassium has a subscript of 2. Now that's because potassium has a valency of 1, sulfate has a valency of 2. So when they cross over, the potassium goes to so K2SO4. Moving to question 19 now, write word and balance formal equations for the action of oxygen on sodium. Now this is from our lesson, two lessons above. So we have sodium reacting with oxygen to form metal oxide, sodium oxide in this case. So if you're writing your chemical equation, sodium reacting with oxygen to form sodium oxide. Now this is good revision for your chemical equation writing because this is part of the topic. So again, when you're balancing equations, if you remember, you have to have four sodium molecules reacting with one oxygen molecule to form two sodium oxide molecules. Again, sodium has a valency of one, oxygen has a valency of two, when they cross over, it becomes Na2O. And we have magnesium reacting with oxygen to form magnesium oxide. Now, magnesium oxide is a white powder. So if you write a chemical equation, it would look like this. We have magnesium reacting with oxygen to form MgO. MgO. Now let's just review back to what we just learned. We learned about reactions with metals and acids. Also, we learned about which acids don't react with acid, which metals don't react with acids, and also the reactivity of them.